So um, we're going to look at layer masks. Uh, I think I showed you guys the Rick Mercer report page the other day where people are combining images. And you can see some of them just are terrible. <laughs> but they all are probably using uh, things like layer masks and uh, copy and pasting, selections. But what we're going to look at is, is layer mask. And um, photo challenge here is something that Rick Mercer has on his site. He has a image of a politician or someone of note, in a, uh, usually in politics in Canada, and you can download that image and then manipulate that image and send it to him and he'll put it up on his website. So what I have is I've got a couple of photos open. Uh, I've got Tom Mulcair here from Rick Mercer's site and I'm going to show you how to layer mask him with one of these other images. So uh, whoops. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his image, and I'm going to take my move tool, and I'm going to drag it over top of another image. Now you can see this is much larger than the image that I'm putting onto, so I have to resize it first. So I'll go Command T, hold down my Shift key to keep things proportional, and then I can resize it. Now when I'm combining people's faces together, you need to have your layers palette open, no matter what you're working on. I always turn down the transparency to about 50% and I can zoom in a little bit. And what I'm going to do with this, if I scroll up a bit, is I'm going to try to match up the eyes. And that is kind of the best way I find to match up people's faces. The eyes are usually fairly a fairly good choice as far as matching faces. Um, and as you see, there we go, it's probably about the right size. Now the problem is we've got all this other stuff to get rid of. I could erase it if I wanted. I could select his face and copy and paste it out. But to really be sure this will work um, as a combined image, I'm going to have to use a layer mask. So to use a layer mask, you go layer, layer mask, and you can choose reveal all, which will leave it looking like this right now, or hide all. So if you choose hide all, you can see Tom Mulcair's face disappears. And I get this black rectangle. This is the mask. It's hiding him. And what I need to do now is take my paintbrush tool and I need to paint him in there. Now the problem is this works only if your colors are set to black and white. Because I've got black here as my foreground color and the color of the mask is black, nothing's happening. If I switch those colors around, I hit an X on my keyboard or that little arrow right there, um, now I can paint him into this picture. And I can pick and choose what I want to paint, right? You know, I don't have to paint all of them in there. Maybe I just want to do bits and pieces. And of course I can always change the size of my brush when I'm doing this. Because you can see his face is a little smaller than her face was. Um, so it's up to you how much you want to paint in and how much you want to keep out. We'll let you decide. Now, because we're painting, we can also hit X on the keyboard to erase out any mistakes that we've made. And you can really use this to blend things together. And you can see now that I shrunk down my brush, I'm kind of blending this a little more. She doesn't need a tie. There we go. Or he, or whatever it is that I've created here. This monstrosity. Um, and there we go. We've got a, a blended image. But the problem with it is that the color just is not right. Well, there's a lot of things that just aren't right about this bearded lady. But. Um, but as you can see, the color is a bit off. So that's something that you have to think of as well. And, and the other day we looked at Eric Johansson, um, his video, and he said that when you combine images, you need to have same sort of perspective, same sort of light. And this definitely doesn't have the same light. So how do we fix that? Well, there's a number of ways we can do this. I can do it with a, uh, an adjustment layer. I can go up to hue and saturation, just as an example and I can change the color of um, this layer here. So if I use my Option button, hold down my Option key and click this, this will attach this adjustment to this layer. 
and I can change the color of Tom Mulcair's face to sort of match up with the face of the woman beneath him. And as you can see, as I'm starting to adjust that, it starts to blend in fairly nicely. So that works. In fact, that's not too bad at all. Um, another option you could have is to create a blank layer and create a selection over top of the thing that you want to adjust. This is a pretty rough selection. Take your color picker or your eyedropper tool, pick the color of the skin, and then take your paint bucket tool, dump it in there, and then choose a blend option like hue and or maybe you want to try overlay or something like that to try to match those up a little bit. And of course, if they're not quite right, you can always turn down the opacity until you get something that does look you know, more along the lines of what you want. And of course, if you really want, you can always combine these two together. So it's up to you. It's a little bit orange. Uh, I'll get rid of that one layer. But it's not bad, right? You know, it could be a lot worse. Um, another thing you can do with this as well is you can use your dodge and your burn tool. Dodge tool is going to lighten that skin a bit. And that'll help blend things as well. Or if it's too dark, you could use, uh, or too light, you could use your, your burn tool uh, to do that as well. So if we zoom out a little bit, kind of weird and freaky. <laughs> So just to reiterate, if you want to combine things, take that object, put it over top of the other one, you're going to resize it, um, and you're going to shrink it down and use the eyeballs as a reference. In this case, the image is facing the wrong way, so I'll just go to Edit, Transform, and I'll flip this horizontally, and then what I'll do is I'll turn down the opacity here to 50%. And then I'll just try to line up those eyes. And we'll hit OK, turn the opacity back up to 100%. Use a layer mask, which is layer, layer mask, hide all. Take a paintbrush. And if I increase the size of the brush here, I'll make it quite big. There we go. So it's um, you know pretty easy to do. And then of course you can use adjustment layers and other layers to manipulate the color and that sort of thing in order to make things match. And then that way you'll have something that looks a little more like uh, what you're hoping to get. There we go, that's a pretty close match. So um, this is something that does take practice and uh, it is a crucial tool and you're gonna be using it quite a bit. And the honest thing about uh, layer masks is that if you are using them, you really do have to get in there and, and actually fine tune your masks. If you move from one layer to another, your mask won't be able to paint on it anymore so you have to click right on the mask and now, if I change the size of my brush and hit X, I can erase out you know, what I don't want. You know, I don't want some weird shadow that's not supposed to be in there, right? Or a collar off of his shirt. And I definitely want his face to be in there. There we go. So um, there you have it, uh, layer masks. So what we want you to do is to go to the Rick Mercer site and download the current week's photo and find another image, uh, it doesn't matter where you get it from, and combine the two. Now the thing is, if you are searching on the net for another image to combine, go to Google, and I'm searching for an image. Maybe I want to combine him with a dairy cow or something. Uh, Go and I go to images. I want to make sure that I choose a large photograph because if I don't, 
if I get something that's small, it's not going to look right. It's always easier to scale things down than it is to make things bigger. So um, that's something that you need to be aware of. Anyway, we'll let you create something fantastic with layer masks. Oh, there was one other thing. Don't combine your images with animals if you can. It looks completely stupid. Uh, there's very few instances where that does work. And absolutely do not combine your images with vectorized or illustrated images because that doesn't work either. So just uh, so you know, work with photos and only photos.